So when it comes to Marlon ISD, I look for leaders that have three qualities and three characteristics. First and foremost, you have to have a heart for children. We are an education school system. Secondly, you have to have that will to win, making sure that whatever we're going after, whether it is academic accountability, running up and down the basketball court, the football field, the volleyball court, we have to win. And then tenacity. Leaders have to be tenacious. Passion can go home at 4 p.m., but if you're tenacious, you will burn the midnight oil. Welcome back to a co-branded episode of The Path Forward and Unlock 360. I am Really, I'm, I'm the co-host, and you'll know what I'm talking about in a minute. We're at TechSedCon. I'm Dr. Rick Fernandez, and I've got a very special guest. I've got Dr. Daryl Henson, the host, and you'll see how this goes, right? I usually don't get, like, he takes, you'll see. I'm Marlon <laughs> ISD superintendent and proud new. Proud new father of two cute twins, Devin and Mia Henson. When I say they look like something, they look like something special. Oh, that's so sweet. I love Congratulations. it. Congratulations. Thank you so much. And then, of course, from LTL, Lead Teach Learn 360, CEO, founder. Is that CEO, right? Founder? Yeah, founder. Wendy CEO, York CEO, president, there. whatever you want to call it. But. Wendy yeah. York DeVue joining <laughs> us. We're here to talk leadership and feel very fortunate. And I, I hope you, you will as well because you got one of the best in the business right here. There's a reason that Marlin ISD has blown the doors off of accountability of outcomes for students. So while that is a good thing, this is a very well-informed superintendent. So leadership, Dr. Hens, I want to start with you. When you think about outcomes for students and the leaders that you have, what does that look like in Marlin ISD? So I've been very vocal in saying that the most influential individuals in a school system are your campus-based leaders. Yes, our faculty and staff, they are the most important. But sometimes you have to lead and influence those important individuals, your teachers, your paraprofessionals, and ultimately your students. So when it comes to Marlin ISD, I look for leaders that have three qualities and three characteristics. First and foremost, you have to have a heart for children. We are an education school system. Secondly, you have to have that will to win making sure that whatever we're going after, whether it is academic accountability, running up and down the basketball court, the football field, the volleyball court, we have to win. And then, of course, I'm a big proponent of FFA. I love goats. In my head, I'm grand champion every time I show a goat. But I want to make sure that our children are winning it. And then tenacity. Leaders have to be tenacious. Passion can go home at 4 p.m., but if you're tenacious, you will burn the midnight oil. Wendy, I got to ask you this, I, and, and I know Daryl very well, and there's a sense of urgency, right? And I, I would say always a sense of urgency about every aspect of Marlin ISD. In coaching leaders and working with teachers, when you have a leader that you very well know, outcomes need to change and they need to change fast and, and there's no excuses. How do you digest that and then go about the work? It's tricky because there there really is an urgent need for our students to be successful right. and to achieve and to be at school and to be engaged and to be able to think critically and, you know, all of those uh, so-called soft skills that they need to develop, right? However, there is also a longer-term need for okay. sustainability. And okay. so oftentimes um, we find that... Um, you know, school site leaders, district level leaders, they have the sense of urgency. They want change. They want it done now. Uh, and so they may implement a quick fix that might get some some quick results. Uh, but then the next year they lose those results Correct. or that it's impact. It's a Band-Aid in that surgery. Exactly. Yeah. Because growing up, when I think about just some of the ailments we all have from playing outside, mm -hmm. we got an ace bandage. Mm -hmm. No, mommy. Mm -hmm. Take with the doctor. Yeah. Like, let me truly see what's wrong so I can have a deeper dive yeah. instead of just ice or put on it some Vicks mm -hmm. Vapor Rub. Mm -hmm. That's not going to solve the issue. Mm -hmm. right. Please take me to a doctor. Because and my parents had health insurance, so I don't know why, but they didn't take me to the doctor. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and <laughs> I like I love these analogies you're using. But, you know, what what the, the reality is that there are kids that are not getting the same uh, opportunities for choice in their future. Yes. And the variance is is unbelievably eye-opening when you look at 
within a school site, from classroom to classroom, um, across school sites, across school districts, across regions, across states, it is mind blowing and it is not okay. And that, that's not to say that all kids are going to end up the same. I mean, they, but they should have the opportunity right. and they Correct. should all have choice for exciting futures for themselves. And if uh, we let, as a leader uh, of a school system, our sense of urgency for results now get in the way of sustainability, all we're actually doing is contributing to the variants, uh, the, the variants that exist because the very next year, we may fall backwards. Correct. And so it's about creating an immediate impact, but not a quick fix. Exactly. We have to have systems that begin to stand the test of time, mm -hmm. knowing that I don't believe in these three, four, and five-year plans, but I do right. believe in three, four, and five-year systems. Yep. Children need equity and access to Absolutely. leadership in the programs because it's all about that school experience. Mm -hmm. And whether it's from classroom to classroom or campus to campus, we have to find ways to minimize the variances mm -hmm. across the board on what one child receives or their experience compared to another student's in the same grade level at the same school or in the same community. Absolutely. And it's it's what you said, um, uh, Daryl, about that campus leadership is key. Uh, because if you try to uh, implement change and get results and, and you know, you, you come in top down, um, you may have some compliant folks who, and you have some people that they just want to do good and they want to please you, uh, but you're not going to be able to develop that momentum and and really spread impact across unless you develop leadership from the middle, which with within a you know school district system that is that school site leadership team. Where so what are some ways that you recommend to kind of shift uh -huh. that mindset of not having that top down approach, but having an approach that is more inclusive? that once again will build systems that will work months, years down the road. So what we have found to be uh, very impactful and we've seen uh, tremendous results in outcomes for kids, um, not just academic, yes, academic, but also in terms of, uh, you know, attendance and grad rate and, and all those other pieces is developing um, leadership from the middle where you, where you have your principal, uh, your assistant principal, um, any coaches that you may have at a school site, partner alongside uh, department chairs or grade level teacher leaders um, in in the format of a school site leadership team uh, that is not just tending to operations and management things. And that's what yes. what we find most school site leadership teams focus on is, you know, what is what is my b b the budget for my grade level? What is the budget for my department? Um, what is uh, you know, what events are coming up? Um, who's going to serve on that committee or that committee? And what we try to do is shift that so that the um, primary focus of a school site leadership team is what are our kids able to do? Where are our kids struggling? How do we know? So it's, it's, it's the professional learning community at a school-wide level, um, whereas in, in most systems we find that there's some grade level teacher collaboratives or there's some professional learning communities happening at a um, at a grade level or within a department. And that's the PLC we try to develop. And what we don't often see is that and a school-wide PLC yes. with, through that school site leadership team vehicle and a district-wide PLC through the vehicle of a district leadership team. I don't know if I answered your question. No, you were very thorough Did, in the okay. answer. And so whenever we're talking about the piece of having a collaborative approach mm -hmm. to leading, yep. we have to stop working in silos and thinking that one person, one man, one woman knows it all and can exactly. lead it all. And You're so whenever right. you shared ownership and shared responsibility is created through this PLC process or just a model of ensuring that we're having multiple ideas, because as a leader, we may not be responsible for all because we can't do it, but right. we're definitely held accountable for it all. And so in order for a great leader to be held accountable for everything, you want to make sure that you are empowering others to be responsible for that department, mm -hmm. that process, Absolutely. focusing in on academics, making sure that every system is sound and you have ways as a leader just to ensure mm -hmm. that decisions are being made that align to the mission and vision of that district. How do you, one of the things that, that I think is a struggle and, and somebody pointed out to me is when you have a very dynamic leader, right? Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit about this um, in, a, in a previous episode. How do you harness 
what they're great at, but yet with the understanding that the other leaders may not have that same ability, mm -hmm. but they have their, their great skills. They have their great traits because I know I, I have to recognize mm -hmm. I'm, I can't be him. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> right. And, and I can't be Rick Fernandez. I shouldn't try. I can't go watch him do his thing and expect that I'm going to be able to emulate that. That ain't going to happen. So realizing that, because that's a tough act to follow. Yeah. And he's 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 very good recruiter. He's got great, you know, leaders and principals. But I see a lot of times where there's a really dynamic leader and then everybody else is kind of left wanting. How do you kind of balance that? Because that's a great point you made. The middle has to be mm -hmm. really the starting spot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For To be able to sustain the work that you do. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah. You know, I think that that um, we, we try to give our teams some tips on what works in leadership in terms of how to communicate, mm -hmm. you know, from the inside out where um, we are big um, fans of Simon Sinek's work and starting with why and that purpose and that heart and knowing that everyone doesn't um, necessarily value the same thing. So when you're, when you're starting with your why, you have to think about your audience just as you would in the classroom when yes. you're thinking about your kids and how their needs are all different. It's... Um, you know, do they need the logic piece? Do they need the emotional piece? Do they need the 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 uh, analytical piece? How am I addressing each of their, their you know, what gets them, what motivates them? And so I think, you know, we try to uh, develop leaders just using some some kind of key yep. basic techniques and, um, and help them with their systems. Uh, structures and processes um, is something that that I think a lot of uh, leaders yearn for and... and that can alleviate some of the other whirlwind that gets in the way if they have those good structures? Yes. And when I say leaders, um, uh, you know, high, higher level leaders, high performing leaders, they have those pieces in place, but aspiring leaders, those sure. that may not know. And, and so all they have is their model of a, of a, oh my gosh, you know, my super in, amazing superintendent, uh, Daryl Henson, I can't be him. So I'm maybe not a leader. Yes. And so it's like, okay, we've got to give them, um, some tips and tricks that they can then, then play with. They um, put in place some structures and processes for working with their colleagues and then start to find who they are. You get them some wins in, 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 the own, yeah. in their own yes. way. I, 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 yeah. I like that. Absolutely. And I think it's important to support leaders being their authentic selves. Oh, my so gosh. I yes. get in trouble a lot because I am my authentic self. I yeah. mean, if you all knew how much I get in trouble or people are shocked that I actually said what I said. Uh -huh. But I'm leading as Daryl Henson. You're being I, yourself. I can't lead like anyone else. Yeah. But Doc, you've earned that though. Yeah. That you you earned. <laughs> but, I mean, right? Well, I, mean, I yeah. You, I, you've. It, it's like being a star. You know, Michael Jordan can say some stuff if he wants to. M Michael Jordan, but I right? mean, I don't think that I'm anywhere I, near the Michael Jordan no, level. No, I know. What I, but but you've earned some of that. A little bit. Okay. I, I, have, okay. I have a little bit of deposit, but I think that I make more <laughs> withdrawals in the eyes of some people than whatever deposits I have. But one thing that I had to realize as I was climbing throughout my journey, no matter what I did, it was going to be viewed as the right way in front of everyone. Yeah. Then something clicked one day when I was a principal and I said, right. I think it's just best to lead as myself. We all understand how to operate a PLC. We know every bit of jargon, but when it comes to how do you interact with individuals, how do you motivate children, how do you ensure strong financial systems, do it in a way that is unique and authentic to you. Yeah. And I believe that that has been my level of success or my secret magic per se is I'm just Daryl Gerard Juby Henson. Mm -hmm. And that is exactly how I lead. And it makes people mad sometimes. Yeah. And I get in trouble for the things that I say. But the children in the Marlin Independent School District are thriving. Right. The families in Marlin ISB are highly successful. And ultimately, they're the ones who I look at as my judges. Mm -hmm. Judges? <laughs> judges. I'm making uh -huh. up words. Yeah, that's okay. I look we at can them. Yeah, you, you feel me? <laughs> yeah. I look at them as they are my judges, and I report to them, not to anyone else. Mm -hmm. Doc, let me, let me ask you this question, because we were, we were kicking this around. When you invite a service provider, a partner into the district, what are the indicators you look for to know, aha, my staff is responding, there's trust there, I, it, it's working? I look at how the, the feedback. Okay. Because staff can be very compliant, take notes yeah. and just say, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am, yes, sir, no, sir. I look for a true level of authentic engagement. Staff is asking questions because now there's a level of trust in what the provider is offering 
So, oh, wow, let me ask this question to them because it might be of value to me. So I just look for that authentic level of engagement and that back and forth. It's critical because we get offerings all the time from service providers. And I'm very selective because I have to make sure that, yes, any program that we implement with Fidelity is going to be successful, but it's more important about my people. It's people over programs. And so I have to make sure that the individuals feel comfortable not only with the service, but the leaders of that service, and right. they see the value and the growth in themselves, which will trickle down to help our students grow. Because that truly is why we are all educators. And I don't think that some people understand that. It is about student growth, yeah. nothing else. I get it. Cafeteria is important. I love warm corn, mm -hmm. <laughs> and too. I love chicken nuggets. I do I, too. <laughs> I love it. I love school bus transportation. We, I used to ride the bus to school. Last uh -huh. day of school, we would open the back of the bus out and run out and run home. I love, I love operations, but when it comes down to it, it's about that level of instruction for our children, and it's everything that we're doing, helping them grow and maximize and shift their potential into performance. That's admirable, and I... Could not agree with you more. If I were in your shoes, uh, that is, that that would absolutely those would be my expectations as well. Um, you know, we're a very small organization born out of the pandemic, and um, if if we aren't helping school schools school districts, if we aren't helping those systems get results for kids, then we're not correct. We're not in the right business. We're not doing what we need to do for our heart and to feed our soul and our like ignite our passion because that's the whole point of what of of this work is so that again um, all kids deserve opportunities for exciting futures yes. and choice in what that can look like for them and it is our obligation mm -hmm. it truly is to, to provide yeah. them with the choices that they can make for their own lives to be productive members of this society mm -hmm. instead of permanent second-class citizens. Yeah. See, things like that that I say, oh, I can't believe you said it's it. Well, not, I'll say it again. If we do true. not get it right in schools, we are going to put children on a path that we put them on mm -hmm. to be permanent second-class citizens. And more often than not, they look like Rick and I. It's heartbreaking. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's heartbreaking. And that's, it's got to stop. And it's that, um, I think what, you know, I really resonated with what you said about leaders being authentic and, um, you know, that's huge. If you, if you can't be yourself, um, which it, it, when you're new, it's harder, you know, it, it may, it, you may not have the finesse. It may not feel as comfortable. Um, uh, but, but when you get to that place where you can truly be your authentic self, that's the missing ingredient. And I forget which book it was that we recently read as a, as a team, because we believe in learning and growing too. We're constantly learning and growing. There you the go. The book is the Bible. There yes. you go. Um, and, and it's the missing ingredient is, is love. It's humility. It's courage. It's authenticity. Correct. You have to have, I call it humble courageousness. Yeah. You have, to like under, you have to understand okay. that the last person it is about is you, but you have to be courageous and truly fight. They say all the time, as a leader, you cannot wear your emotions on your sleeve. I have it on my sleeve. <laughs> on my shoulder, on my feet, feet everywhere. When just you're like, on the track. Just, I'm so glad just, you just said like, that just because like I thought, uh-oh. Shoulders, I'm, chest, I'm, pants, I'm and shoes. Why to do because that's on my sleeve. <laughs> yes. I mean, because, and it's just highly important to make sure that we show children who we are. Mm -hmm. Like, we are not. Because they know. You know this. They, 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 they know. know. They know. They know. Like, they, we are not robots. Yeah. I want to know that my teacher cares about me and that at nighttime they, they might wear a do-rag and they like birria tacos yeah. with the good juice over yeah. there in Waco, Texas, off of Hewitt Drive. I mean, they need to, to know that. We, oh, look, I'm telling you, it's $12. <laughs> That's okay. The best $12 right. you're going to spend in your life. Okay. All right. I can't wait. <laughs> Try I'm, it. I'm trying to tell you, them, them, them tacos Bar will make people cute in the face and thick in the ankles. Those are some good tacos. Berio? Berio? Birria. Birria. Birria tacos. Birria. He's, you, know, you know, dogs, he's, he's uh, bilingual. I did not know that. I mean, I, I speak a lot of languages. Okay. All right. You know, That's awesome. I speak a, yeah. I speak a lot of languages. Impressive. But the number one language is children. I speak children. Yep. But I think it's because it's a level of love that I have for, for this profession. It's not about just loving my yeah. one job. I actually love the profession of education. Mm -hmm. And I wish that more leaders actually had fun on the job. I get yeah. it. Everyone has a mortgage or has a car note to pay or has rent to pay. 
But once again, if you're going to work every single day and you're loving what it is you do, it's going to naturally be yep. infectious. I don't want you to scoop back six yeah. feet. Get closer. Catch the level of love. I don't want you to put on a mask. No, mask off and catch the level of love. And when children know that you love them and you're excited to teach algebra and teach fractions and teach phonics, something tells me seven-year-olds and 13-year-olds and 18-year-olds are so impressionable. They are. Why do we let TikTok and all this dance and then they mess up half the songs that I know and they everyone's shaking their leg? <laughs> They're so impressionable on that. They would copy us if we had that level of fun. Yeah. yeah. So right. I'm not going to create a TikTok education. It's just called a textbook. But we have to make sure that we're not, in my opinion, trying to be too catchy or overly innovative. The basics work. Sometimes we, we have to works. go back we to the basics and just educate children from our minds and from our hearts. It's the three C's, culture, curriculum, and common sense. Mm -hmm. Well when, said. Wendy, I want to I end this on this one. So one of the things that struck me when we first met and we're talking, you said, I don't have a cookie cutter approach. And, and it, the initial reaction was like, hmm, okay, because we see cookie cutter approach that that's this whole industry is very much a system, a program, uh, a, a prescription. So when you say we don't do that, what is it that you do? Like you, you work, you work with Dr. Hence, you work with some, how do you take what they do well in their needs, but you tailor it to what they need to, to really impact the student outcomes? We do have some, some basic approaches that right. we know work. Um, Rather than, I'm not, uh, it, I'm not saying it's like, hey, we're just going to make it up on the right, <laughs> right, right, yeah, but, okay. But I know that it's but, it's a, it's very much a tailored right. approach. Yeah, yeah. So how do we do that? Yeah, well, yeah. What's the process? How do you know? All right, I've got the sense. I see the needs. So this is mm -hmm. how we're going to tailor it for for what Doc needs for his kids. I think we listen. We we ask questions. We um, get in there and observe. We you know we you frequently will meet with. Uh, the superintendent or the district team and site leaders to just start asking questions and getting to know them. I mean, obviously, we'll, you know, we'll we'll do our research in that. I've, um, you know, been able to watch a few of the podcasts that you've done with Rick, and I'm familiar with the background in the of the district and a chat. You know that. Um, Dusty Marlin is there. Yeah, that, 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 that controversy that you all uh, went through and experienced, and um, you know, so I, we we try to do our homework, but we also. Uh, want to listen in and which learn Marlon is that. thriving. We've had four years that. of a 100% graduation rate, that. four years of CCMR. Marlon and I is the phenomenal students, phenomenal teachers, and phenomenal parents. That's amazing. Yeah, you should be be very proud. Yes. When I tell people <laughs> that I love Marlon, Texas, yeah. I love, because I'll say at the time, um, make sure that it's okay to love your job but not fall in love with it. I fell in love with Marlon. Like, I think about it on the weekends. Yeah. You know, I'm on the beach thinking about Marlon. Like, it's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's a level of love. It's a you level of love. You have to have that to be a superintendent. Yeah, I mean, you, you have, have to. to have you that have to be an effective superintendent. You absolutely do. Um, I think, I guess, last piece, you know, schools and, and systems, they do know what work. But, again, they struggle to, to put in the practices that can be sustainable and get results for kids over time now and over time and stay and stick. And um, so what we try to do is we don't want to be this ne next new thing. That's not, we're not a thing. Correct. And that's why we're not this one-stop shop. Here's our, you know, here's our manual. Here's our program. Right. Um, but we, what we do want to do is um, really get to know and use, use your language and use your structures. And, and sometimes those, we can help you shift them if they're not being impactful. Um, and sometimes the structures are there. And then we just have to develop the leadership and the capacity and the instructional expertise um, so I don't know if I answered your question. Did I cover yeah. that okay? Yes. I mean, it, it was, a, it, it's a hard question to answer yeah. because there's so many variables, but yeah, there are, what, what I, what I, and I'll tell you this again, what I love about your approach is the humility and like, you know what, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask, I'm going to ask the question. I'm going to ask the leaders yeah. I'm going to listen. And when I have the information, then we get to the work. Yeah. Instead of saying, Hey, I got this, this is going to work. It's, it's guaranteed. And it, you know, 10%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we hear that all the time, and I just roll my eyes. Mm -hmm. So, And I think questioning also just brings a level of focus back to the leadership. It allows us to make sure that we truly know our school system because there are some leaders, you're right, to where they might just focus solely in on the fun but cannot tell you a lick of data. And so it has to be a strong balance of understanding your processes for curriculum, for leadership, 
for teacher development, but at the same time, understanding that because we work with so many individuals, there has to be a level of engagement and excitement in all that you do. Absolutely. They are people and we have to, we have to empower them and Correct. we have to give them voice. Because it's just not about the direct deposit. It is about enjoying, like we only have one life. And if you're getting up at five o'clock in the morning, 5.30 in the morning to drive to a campus, I want for every person from the employees to our children, to our families, to enjoy the experience that they receive in Marlin Independent School District. And I believe for the most part that the majority of our families and stakeholders, they enjoy what Marlin ISD offers to them because it is second to none. Let's end it there. That was, that was, let's take us out. Uh, Thank y'all, Doc. Thank you for being here. Thank you for Wendy, having me. Thank you for uh, being courageous and jumping on. And uh, uh, I was in co-hosting duty today as per usual, and I would appreciate the comments of quit requesting Daryl to be on the show. <laughs> uh, yes, I know you don't have to text me or message me or any of that. I appreciate that. But in all seriousness, uh, you know, thank y'all very much. And, and to the audience, if you like what you hear and see, please subscribe, hit the like button. Check out Wendy, LTL 360. You know where Dusty Marlin is. He'll be back many, many times. So we'll see you again on the Path Forward and Unlock 360. And if I could just say thank you. Thank you, Dr. Absolutely. Fernandez. Thank you, uh, Dr. Henson, no, for taking you so your much. time thank you. uh, to be here today. We appreciate it. You got it. My pleasure.